Well, people, welcome back to another video. Um, fishing New Haven Harbour entrance. It's a, actually a beautiful day. Misty, foggy at times. Um, I checked with the other guys that have been fishing here. When I arrived, a whole bunch of people packed up and left. Um, I was not the caught anything. I said not a bite today at all. Doesn't look like there's any whiting around, etc. So I was fishing a bit, five minutes or so, with my uh, twizzle boomed pattern os the dropper rig. Um, had a few bites actually, um, so I decided to take the camera out and put it out. Plus I've got some additional new audio. Um, Equipment on my camera, so this is an opportunity with a, a light, very light breeze blowing from the south southwest um, to see how that, the, how the new um, audio equipment um, holds up in these conditions. So um, I'm going to, I'll show you the audio equipment um, later. I'll make a different recording of that equipment and then uh, attach it to this video, just so that you can get an idea of of what I'm recording with. Um, this camera particularly is a GoPro um, Hero 5 Black. Um, the, the first video that I put out was with the GoPro Hero 5 Black without any audio thing and hence the wind was absolutely terrible and the sounds of the wind was, <laughs> was not good and all the surround sounds. Um, so to it I've added a Rode mic. Um, I'll, I'll add to the video the caption of the, the model or put it in the description of the video which road mic it is um, and then yeah I'll show you the, the setup um, to the Hero 5 I've added the mic adapter the GoPro mic adapter etc with a shoot um, casing that handles and keeps the adapter nice and organized and um, not just hanging loose as, as probably so I'm going to do a bit of fishing now and then you know, I'll keep the rod tip in field of view. Um, you can watch the bites. There's, according to anybody, there's not anything being caught. Some people fishing next to me on this side, I um, haven't seen them catch anything. They've, they seem to be striking at some bites and I've also got those bites as well. So let's see how it goes. All right, welcome. Um, sit back, relax and enjoy this video. So, yeah, I'll just show you what I'm fishing with the Paternoster style twizzle boom uh, dropper rig. I'll make a video on how to make this. And then uh, the Gotter 240, which is a 2.4 meter rod, and my Mitchell Avoset S6000R, Avoset 2 S6000R. Um, yeah, and there's all many, some light stuff. I will start making some videos with you know, proper beach fishing and stuff um, soon um, when I get the chance to get out so, to the beaches I will do that so, let's get this going see what we can catch if anything but it's scratching around today just with chunks of mackerel for bait um, Two ounce lead on there, so nothing, nothing fancy. Just a, a trolling weight, as I've shown previously. It's not that cold. So it's like that. See if we get any bites. Well, that's waiting. I'll show you where we are. I 
last day for the boat. But I missed that point. It's Sunday morning, so Sunday morning is normally breakfast with the wife, which takes priority. <laughs> Quite a still warm day. It must be about eight or nine degrees at the moment, which is which is quite good. Um, so yeah, so it's not that cold as it normally as it was the last few days, where it was down to two, one degrees at night, and then three or four degrees during the day. It's warmed up a bit. Normally when the whiting is in, I'd hold the rod as it's action packed. But it seems they're not seems like they're not in today. So it's a bit of white for the bite fishing time. So. It was high tide at 10.11 this morning, it is now 13.19, 19 minutes past 1, which, is mean, which means it's 3 hours after high tide, so it's kind of that mid, mid low tide to high tide thing. I prefer this mock actually at uh, at low tide it fishes very well at low tide and nobody caught anything on the high tide so let's see i'll, I'll give it a maybe an hour or two uh, fishing it down to to low tide always fishes well for me at low tide i've never blanked on the on the, on the low tide and the high tide are always struggle yes when the fish are in they're in on any tide it doesn't matter but i i seem to um, on this mark, particularly in the river entrance, in front of the the Hope Inn, which is currently under construction, um, busy they're busy construct reconstructing it. I'll, I'll show you what's going on. Yeah, this. there's the monstrosities that I talk about. It needs to go. It's an eyesore in, the, in New Haven, and then the Hope Inn. They've got some construction going on in the front of it so um, inside the thing and also they're fixing all of the stuff and hopefully be open in the next few weeks again because that's where we get to have lunch and coffee and stuff uh, so. so just in my experience this is a very good low tide rock um, when the water's at its lowest the fish is the best uh, 
and that's what I've experienced here. So. And, and, and many people always chase the high tide. They don't, they don't seem to think that they can get much fish on the low tide. So whenever I come here on the low tide, unless they're camping out for the whole day, you know, and they're just out for a good day, lots of people come fish the high tide and go. And then for the majority of times, uh, I'm fishing this mark alone at, at low tide. As I've seen now, when I arrived, it was kind of, I want to say two and a half hours or so after the high tide. And people are packed, were packing up, everybody's packing up. Um, even the guys next to me that I put in the field of view earlier, um, he started packing up some of his rods as well. So, but Yeah, I, s I swear by the, the low tide mark. This is a low tide mark rather than a, a high tide mark for the quality fishing. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone else's experience is different of the mark. Uh, that's just what I've experienced. So. It's actually warm. Well, the field's pretty warm. It's nice, light, very slight, light breeze. Must be five, up to five kilometers an hour or something. Nothing much to speak of. Nice and comfortable. It's not always like that. You can blow here. When you're holding on to your gear, tying things down so that it doesn't disappear over the railing and into the water. That pulling down on the on the rig is two things. Um, one is the tides running out of down the river and out into the sea, um, and two crabs are probably tugging at the bottom bait, and that's what it looks like bites. It's probably just the crabs tugging at the bottom bait. It's not a, a sharp uh, fish bite fish bite would actually pull the tip down like that. That's, that looks purely like crabs. And as I said in my last video, I'm trying to get through the 50 odd mackerel that I had stored in the freezer. So I'm using all the, the good fishing days on in this winter to just use that mackerel as bait. Um, there's no point catching it and storing it in the freezer for five years. It's been there for two years already. So we'll, we'll, keep, we'll, keep, we'll keep using that until until it's depleted and then come summertime and the mackerel come in and we catch a few more and then I can freeze some fresher ones um, but this the, the using this lot of mackerel has seemed to have paid off um, so far it's been anywhere upwards of a hundred fish um, over a hundred fish so that's that looks that's typical crab tugging at the bait um, that looks like a, a fish bite but We'll let it develop. It could be the crabs walking, walking with the bait, and all of this is very light gear, so 
it looks a lot worse than it actually is when it turns off the bite. The secret is having that patience to, to leave it. <laughs> Most times we we get we get excited by by the bite indications and we go and strike and always miss the, the bites. So as time goes you learn the patience of waiting for that bite to develop. So as you can see it's stopped now. If there was a fish on there it would have been trying to move away with the bait um, and drag that lead on the bottom. It's continuing and the crab's probably reaching up for the, the second hook of the, the, the middle hook with the bait on. That's been about 10 minutes. Let's, let's reel it in. I always fish to a time. You know, 15, 20, 25, 30 minutes, depending on what, you're, what I'm fishing for. So, it's been about 10 to 15 minutes now. Yeah, there's nothing on here. Uh, but let's have a look at the bait and refresh the bait. We have enough bait. And as you can see, the crabs have... The crabs have tugged off all of the, the bottom hooks. And something's been tugging on that top bait so let's put some fresh bait on that and then put it out there there we go it's a nice bloody bait get some scent out in there so in the middle of those chunks of mackerel there's still some some of its original guts and stuff like that so it gets good good scent off it and attracts the fish to it that's why i don't ever fill it if i'm doing mackerel chunking like this. I don't fill it the mackerel. I cut it um, in segments um, and then just straight round segments the whole fish and then half that and put pieces halves of those segments onto the hook. It's actually good to do a video like this where you show the, the longer periods of, of, of waiting between catches. The last few videos have been action-packed when it came to fishing. But that's not what fishing is all about all the time. Sometimes you've got to wait for, for the fish to come in. Um, you know, they might not be there whenever you want them to be. And when they turn up, 
if your bait's in, you catch some fish. Um, but, but either way, it's always an enjoyable experience um, fishing, whether you caught fish or not. Um, you know, it's nice to catch fish, but sometimes it's, it's, it's the other side benefits from fishing that we get from it. You know? The time to just be outside with nature, in nature, experiencing the elements. It's cold, sometimes it's windy, you catch nothing, um, but you still go home rewarded um, in terms of um, you know you had some time to get some mindfulness time um, to, to, to clear the head clear the mind and then be ready for the next part of life's um, exciting challenges so, and there we go as you saw the bite like I said as I was talking it's possible that as we were waiting the fish have come, come in and there you go that looks like a decent sized fish on there and this would be the first fish i see for the day and i'm hoping that this rod would get it up i wouldn't pressure this rod oh dear oh dear oh dear i'm going to have to do something special to get this up without breaking the rod and I'm going to do it by hand you will not believe what I just caught a flounder look at that people what a nice flounder you just saw that as I'm talking about not catching anything yeah I catch a very beautiful decent sized flounder and as you can see hooked in the upper side of the mouth nobody saw that coming neither did I as much as I'm talking about there's days where the fishing is not good and you gotta wait for the bite it it surprises you so there you go who expected that? That's fishing. Expect, expect nothing and the best happens. Did not see that coming and what a great bite. So. Here you go. What a beautiful fish. Check it out. It's going to go right back. Even though this is perfect eating size. Um, I'll reward this fish with this <laughs> saving the blank with this this is just stunning did not expect that anyway it's gonna go straight back and then I've got to sort out my rig because it's all tangled up as I had to bring it up by hand if I had to use the rod the rod would have broken so there we go. What nice. Beautiful. This is probably my PB flounder in the New Haven River entry. So, yeah. Stunning. And as you can see, as much as it's a good eating size fish, we shall we shall put it back. You want to eat? You want that one? Nice. Nothing, nothing special. Nice. Yeah. I saw your video a couple of times. Yeah. Especially the when you break the rod. Yeah. Yeah. 
So this is the next one. You need a. I've got loads of good ones. So this is just a, it's, okay. it's an experiment to see if you can catch decent fish with. Nice video. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, enjoy. Enjoy. It's a good fish to eat. I'll leave the comments. <laughs> Thank you. Well, the guy that was fishing next to me, um, it's, a, it's a good fish to eat. I'm not going to eat it, so he took it. Um, yeah. Now we've got to untangle all of this mess. Um, yeah, I'll resume the video once I've sorted all of this out. So, yeah, we're back after the flounder, rebaited, again, some bloody pieces of mackerel chunks. Let's put this out there and see how we go. Just as we were talking about blanking, <laughs> the fishing god smiled upon us, yeah? So, yeah. Grateful for that catch. Nice. Did not expect that at all. Mm, sun's out. Lovely. Maybe it's time I can take this beady thing off. Too low on the camera, so I'm gonna sign this video out. Well, for it guys, so thank you for watching. Um, thank you for the liking, and subscribing to the channel. Um, if I catch anything better, different, exciting, <laughs> newsworthy, uh, I will add it to the video. So until next time, thank you. Signing off. Bye.